Easter Day is coming. Grandparents Day will be celebrated at our building. We did that several years ago. We're going to do it again. We're going to do it on the homecoming. There was a fee issue one in Wakefield on a post principal meeting every August. I went to that and picked up some second information from the Rats Park Education Group. Elementary Parent Advisory Committee, I do two of those a year. We have one coming up here in September. Conferences are coming already, and that will be October 1st week. Uh, there's a conference in Lincoln that's called MTSS. It's multi-tiered assistance and support. It, uh, the legislature passed an reading initiative that we put in policy last month, and this conference helps here, but uh, I don't know if you had a chance to read this or had any questions about it. Um, Anthony mentions fire drills uh, that they participated in. He was also at that issue one principal meeting. Midterms, believe it or not, already this week, already in midterm. <laughs> it seemed like we just got going. Uh, he speaks of homecoming there. Coronation will be held on Sunday, September 23rd. The ceremony at 6. Here he has the enrollment. 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. Up eight students from last year.
Thursday, the 20th of September, we have our home cross country invite that day um, at the golf course, 4.30, so if you want to come watch the runners, that'd be a good time to do it. Um, we can discuss this before the meeting, but the football team needs to travel to uh, Genoa on Friday. <laughs> I think they're looking forward to it. Um, volleyball, they played in the Boone Central Tournament this last weekend, this last Saturday, and they ended up placing fourth. Good competition, teams that we don't generally see around here, Columbus Lakeview, Central City, they play the board. Um, so those are the three teams that they played and, and placing fourth did well. Um, girls golf, I think I mentioned last time, last month, that we had one girl and she was from Harding to Newcastle. So we've kind of turned things over to Harding to Newcastle this year, I think we mentioned that the last time. So they are paying for entry fees, they're paying for transportation for their student two meets, and then they're also paying Coach to Blau to Milage to drive over for practice. Then they're just practicing over at their at the course at Hardington. So they're kind of taking care of all that this year and whether or not you know, it's the first year of a two year co op agreement, um, chances are that may not continue just because of logistics and everything with them. Um, so that remains to be seen, but chances are that's not going to continue. I uh, also mentioned last month that the Band was going to do the uh, Ford Drive for Your School event that was sponsored by Moody Motors. So they'll ask uh, people to test drive a vehicle and they'll get so much money donated back to uh, the band um, that way. I think October 1st, I believe, is the day of that. I think they're going downtown and doing the Dollar Burger night that night as well. Uh, they get to start their marching season. If any of you at the football game on Friday night, you kind of got to see a little preview of, of their marching did a very nice job, but there's more to it than that, she assured me, so. <laughs> but they're working hard. They were in this morning practicing from, I think, 8, or not 8, but uh, 7 to 8.15 is when they are here this morning. Uh, they start their marching season, they'll go to the 3rd, they'll go to Pierce, and then they turn around on the 6th that Saturday morning, and they get to go to Grand Island for Harvest of Harmony. So they'll leave early that morning. Um, Last month, I also mentioned that uh, the Ag Education Program that Mrs. Mann had applied for and received a $1,700 grant for a grow tower where she could put it in her classroom. It is up. Students put it up, planted the seeds. Um, they are growing. And if you walk past her room, you might see it glowing in the corner. So the lights come on and off. And it's uh, kind of interesting to see it. Um, FFA members went to Pierce this last Saturday for their district tri tractor driving contest. They had six kids go. Um, she said there's six parts to the contest. It's not just the driving aspect. She said there's parts and tool identification. Um, they have tractor safety inspection tests. There's an operator's manual questions, uh, 50 questions with general knowledge, and then they have to actually do the perform where using a uh, pulley, a one or a one that's pulling a two-wheel implement and another one that pulls a four-wheel implement. So she said she was pleased with the way the kids that went, I don't know who they were, she didn't mention that, but uh, she was pleased with what they did. Um, district Dairy Judging is coming up here on the 19th in Hardington. And then she kind of also wanted me to mention, this doesn't take effect until next year, is the fact that we host, or we're, it's our turn to host the uh, district FFA leadership development events. So when it comes time for calendar, She's going to mention again, I said, after the first of the year, I said, say something again. Yes. Um, where. We'll work that into our calendar. Yep. All the schools come in um, from in our district and they have their, their district tests. Um, she uses all the classrooms, just like a speech meeting. Right. She uses all the classrooms, the gym, the commons, everything's used. Um, so there's all, like hundreds of students that day. So she just want to put that out there, which said, you know, I said, well, make sure for the first of the year, yes. say it again. Um, FCCLA is going to be sponsoring a pink out on September 25th. That's the night of the volleyball triangular that we have here with Norfolk Catholic and Lutheran High. Um, they're selling t-shirts. Did that get put on the website? Do you know? I know there's forms out by the, by the front window and then they're going to do some cupcake sales um, during the game. And all that money is going to go to a place called Camp uh, Koholo that's near Omaha and it's a camp where children who have received or are currently receiving cancer treatments. So the money's gonna go down there. Um, they, the organization has already contacted Northport Catholic and Lincoln High to kind of get their student body and their fans, give them the option to buy t-shirts and just let them know what's going on as well. Um, one act, 
it started rehearsals. They have a cast of about 25 kids. So their mornings are taken up. Not every morning, I think it's just kind of got them maybe two, two, maybe three times a week uh, right now, just getting them going. Um, at the end of last month, I got to drag Mr. Raggy home to a mid-state conference meeting on a Wednesday. <laughs> Um, again, we're in charge of the conference this year, so we are responsible for conducting the meetings and setting the agendas and doing all the minutes and taking care of all the financial aspects of it. Um, so that is on our plate again as well, or done again, but for the first time. So hopefully it will go well. <laughs> but that's all I have. Unless you have any questions or anything? I'm in charge of um, Mrs. Hymas, well, Mrs. Weasler, she's to be Zoe Hymas. She's in charge of one act, and then Mrs. O'Brien is her assistant, and then for speech, they flip flop. Right. So Mrs. O'Brien gets the speech, and then Mrs. Right. Lisa will be her assistant. I had a question, Pam, and I think you mentioned this, but I had a few people ask me about the no, no cheerleaders. Is that just because of no interest in the cheerleading? Right. Or? Yeah, we had okay. a sign up sheet this last spring, and there were three kids that signed up, and that was it. You know, you look at the list now and what they're in, I think all three of those are involved in cross country. So you kind of, it comes time for football games, like maybe one, there might have been one that was not, but you'd have maybe one girl. So I mean, it, it did come down to an interest thing and yeah, it was. It seems like more and more schools have no cheerleaders. Yeah. But yeah, that's okay. basically yeah, that what came down to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what we said, five or six. It was five or six. I think we, we said we wanted to have at least that. You yeah. know, to feel like we had that if someone was missing or sick or gone. But and three just Some have jobs and if they work and then they're gone. And, and, and take two, you take one. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Any other questions? Staff um, board development opportunities for you. Um, I mentioned this last month, uh, but the, the one in Norfolk coming up is Wednesday, October 3rd. Uh, again, you can see uh, Timmy Roger Clare, you're due to get certain level awards. It must be for years or meetings attended and those sorts of things. If you choose to go, um, anyone else is also welcome to go. You can see there, you know, it's. Uh, You have a session or two, and then they have uh, usually have the uh, dinner there, and then uh, some, a couple other sessions. It's just a it's just a mini conference sort of thing. So if you would let me know if you'd like to go, uh, please do so. Hearing hearing nothing, I won't make you those reservations. But uh, Claire, anyone else interested necessarily in that one? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I want to make sure you write down that player is interested in that. Um, I would be interested as well. Okay. And we can ride down together or you can drive separately. It's up to you. Um, typically just met here and driven down together. But it's not in Norfolk. It is in Norfolk. Even if you change your mind, you know, uh, you can sure let us know, but otherwise I'll just register Lisa and Claire. The next one, that's uh, the 100th Annual State Education Conference. Um, I have uh, some of the dates there for you. We'll leave Wednesday, um, November 14th. And this is, uh, I'll call the big one. It's down in the La Vista Conference Center. Return Friday in the afternoon. Um, registration does open the 12th, which is this week already, and then at the towards the end of this month, before we meet next, uh, they open up the rooms. You know, at 10 o'clock in the morning on a certain date, and we need to get on. I need to be on there and, and try to secure those rooms to stay right on site. Otherwise, you have to stay clear off. So it's always kind of a gamble there. It's like a slot machine. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. But so I definitely need to know um, regarding this one who might want to attend. And you, you have time, but as soon as you know, you let me know. Um, and if you know now, I'd appreciate that as well. Does anyone know for sure? Yeah. Um, no. Yeah, I have it on my calendar as well. Jane will be there. What's that? Jane will be there. So, Claire, <laughs> Roger, Tammy, yep. and, and Lisa.
Lisa. Again, the so same thing. We can drive them together. We can take two school vehicles or, or one, and if someone wants to drive themselves, it doesn't matter. We can figure all that out later. But it just depends on everybody's schedule and what they'd like to do. So. Oh well, yeah, last yeah, couple years in a row we were <laughs> snowed out. Do we have any more guys? Okay. Homer skate. So make sure and put that on your calendar. Regarding the air conditioning project, or the, um, we've talked quite a bit about this, but I do have a few questions for you on how you'd like to proceed. This, um, this is uh, neither right nor wrong. We can have a separate night, uh, a work session. It can be just a committee. Now, a committee isn't an advertised thing. A committee can be whenever, and it doesn't have to do that. It could be, or it could be the entire board. Um, the purpose of this meeting, or it could just be part of our regular meeting like we have tonight. I'm going to have a speaker come in to talk about the, the variety of ways to proceed. And there's there are different ways to approach a project like this. The RFQ is similar to what we went through a little bit last year, which is a request for qualifications. Now what that means is, um, like last year, you, you basically were looking at different companies and then deciding, and I, as I recall, the board didn't necessarily like that process because you weren't necessarily getting, or you weren't not necessarily, you weren't getting bids. You were hiring a company, and then it was turning around and telling you. We had that um, verbal uh, discussion here where you were saying, "Well, it'd be nice to have two or three bids to look at that." So that's one way of doing this: request for qualifications. Um, you can also do a request for proposal, which is called an RFP, which you can basically say, "We want an air, we want you guys to design our air conditioning for us," and then they come in. The, the, the problem with that. Avenue is you might not be getting apples to apples. You know, people, you know, as you can imagine, like to do things differently. So you want to be careful with you know which avenue you choose, and we have to be well informed. But um, in the traditional, we would hire an engineer, an architect engineer, to um, create exactly what we need, and then put that out for bids. And then you are comparing, in fact, all from the same thing because they they get all the but the, the issue with the traditional route is you have to pay that architect engineer um, whether you do the project or not because you know they want they'll spend considerable time creating your project for you and then providing the documents so they'll, they'll get paid either way but a lot of people do each of these so there isn't a right or wrong I gave you just the one minute explanation of those, but I think it'd be good to have someone come in who's in the business and describe each of those and have you hear why they think this one or that one or the other one, and then have you decide which, which avenue you'd like to go forward with as we move forward so that you feel comfortable, and also knowing the variety of ways to approach it. Neither one of them is right or wrong, right or wrong. So is the architect, the engineer, is that a flat rate, or is that based on It's, it's usually a percentage of the total oh. cost, so they get some up front. And it might be 78% of a project. So um, depending on the cost of the project, will depend on how much they're paid. That's really the only way to get an unbiased opinion. Yes. And the problem is they're getting paid on percentage of the total projects. So they probably want to make the projects a little more. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that, Roger. That's very intuitive um, because each of these, there's a different, there's a, you trust someone different in each. So you're really trusting if you do the RFQ because you're hiring that company. You're trusting them, you know, and that sometimes that's based on you know maybe area schools that have used it and they've been around a long time and, and they're trustworthy. Also, they're thinking long term. You know, we're talking about possible future additions or possible. You know, just we're having all these community discussions and they they don't want to do a project and then be done with us sort of thing. We also talk to one another. We might talk with other area superintendents. Who did you use? Do you like them? trust them, those sorts of things. So that's the RFQ, so you're trusting a little bit before you know what the price is. RFP, the request for proposal, are how are you trusting that they're giving you, you 
know, are they writing and giving you something cheap? You know, because they want the job. We also, I think we wrote in our policy that we didn't have to automatically take the least expensive one. We can consider other things there, so which I think was good that you did that. And the, and, and the traditional, just what you said, is the architect engineer um, making it more expensive to make more money. But then that goes back to trust. You have to trust your engineer, which I've been doing some reaching out to people. Um, who would you use? Did you, you do this project? Who would you use? So I guess my biggest question for you is, do you want this to be a separate work session? Uh, do you want it to be a committee where there's three people there? Do you want it to be the full board and hear, you know, an explanation of all these projects on a separate night, or do you just want it to be part of a regular board meeting? It, it doesn't matter to me either way. So it's either a committee, a separate night with the full board where you'd advertise in the paper, <coughs> or part of a regular board meeting. That's my question for you. Personally. That doesn't have a conflict because this is right. embedded into my brain that yeah, I'm going to be here this right. this yeah, second Monday of the month that I'm going to be here. Would it be hard to shoot for? Busy, 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 so it may have more time scheduled otherwise. But the six of us are kind of yeah committed to this night, right? So mm -hmm. I'd want me to have him come in on in October then. Now, he'll be a representative for one of them, but it doesn't mean that you in any way have to do this. It's just that they know the process better and they can. And you'll you'll hear. You'll, you'll get catch on to it. They'll lean you. They'll lead be leaning towards one, but that does not mean that you have to do that in any way. Sure. Uh, but they'll be able to describe the, the pros and cons to, to each of those, and then that way you'll be very informed when we decide to take Avenue A, B, or C, and then you'll know the reasons why. So, so who's going to who's yeah. going to come to the meeting? It's our, well, one of the representatives from the train from the company. From the company. Why couldn't we have an engineer come in and say, "This is what I offer. You give us his sales pitch as to why he would." Over specific companies. Well, and we we can we can okay, do that with an engineer, you. but first it's just deciding which of those routes you'd like to take is what I think is important. And then we can we can even shop. Decide. We can even interview engineers if we'd like to. Yeah. You know, if that's the route, if you want to go the traditional route where the engineer designs it, we can interview them if you need to. Will that be Ron Alfus, the construction project manager of the train? He was a guy that did. He may, be, he may be there. There are several that have worked for them. Yeah, Plainview did just do one with his train. Osmond uses train. Osmond uses train, but yeah. then next door Huntington uses somebody else, so it's it's all over the place. They were up against the timeline or whatever, but they when the school bell rang, they came in and they worked all the while to try to get it. They were like a day behind and they were just they were gonna be there until whenever they got it done. So they were pretty they were through the process. That was Are these, are these like a heat pump, or are they just a specific air conditioner? I think they're just rooftop units, just like we have now. Which are just specifically air conditioned. Yeah. They aren't heated to I was asked. That. I'm sure. um, I didn't have this as part of my uh, presentation, but since we're here, I thought I'd show What's you a few. If you've looked at uh, or watched our social media at all, uh, today we had an in-service and we had teachers share here at the high school all the things that they're doing and it was powerful. It's two and a half hours where each teacher shared what they're, three to five minutes on what they're doing, how they're using it. And it was neat to hear how the teachers are adapting and moving forward with our technology initiative. Some of these pictures here you're looking at, this is the human geometry. When I think about this activity alone, they went outside to take pictures and form different geometrical shapes. They came back inside and they were working on these things together. What was neat about this is they started working on these things um, and it was one, um, I think this was the, the one where it was one person working on it and you've probably all been in school where one person's doing a lot of the work and the other three or four are sitting around, you know, you know, throwing pencils at each other and things like that. They now, because of the use of this iPad, can collaborate using um, you know, slides. They were able to work on them all at the same time. One of the kids says, hey, how come we're not using Google Slides today? And it was just interesting hearing the kids suggest things and the teachers then allowing them to do that. There's just some more various pictures of them. Here, um, this is another picture I posted where they were working on a science project and then drawing um, the different phases of, of 
uh, whatever it was they were saying at that moment, I don't remember. And then they were annotating verbally, using iMovie, they were describing what they had drawn, and things like that. So all throughout the school, um, Lisa has been taking pictures for me and then bringing them in and showing me these things because I don't always get to see them in action. This is in um, this is Taney's class. They were using them to create um, different dresses and uh, articles of clothing and color them and do things like that. So, and oh, and then here we go. This is not iPad stuff, but this is the house. I've been in contact with um, Brent, and uh, it's kind of tough to see it a little bit. Well, you got forms up already. Yeah, um, that just happened. Uh, it was supposed to happen. I think I sent you a message last week, and I texted him. I want to say later, and he said he this weekend, and he was there this weekend, digging out. And it is difficult to see, but um, down down here, you can see where he's dug out. Um, you know, all the way down there, taken out. These are the forms. I seen the concrete front there today. Yeah, right. So there, they have uh, the whole front. I'll call it the uh, the front. Um, Oh, there's more of our sharing session. I'll get back to the other. Uh, this is us sharing today. And then down at the elementary, what they worked on for part of the day is they have their new social studies curriculum, and that's what they worked on, among other things. But it was neat to see them today. Um, let me show you a few more pictures. I thought I had a few, but that's the only one that I have right there. But they go around the corner to the south side is what they had done, and I saw them digging around. So when he actually got to the actual removal of that, it was moving pretty quickly. So I'll be really anxious to see how this turns out. What? He formed out for the address collectors. Yes, yeah, I did talk with him, thank you, um, to make sure that when he formed those that they would work as he addressed, and he assured me, and then I want to talk to him again, and before he had started, and he reassured me that he had those. Um, so he put the windows in? We, um, or is he just put plywood over them? Yeah, we can have them do that. We had that wasn't part of that initial bid, but uh, but those windows definitely need to come out. If you looked at those, they were they were horrible. So, okay, that was just a, a little addition to uh, my report. That's all I have for you. Do you feel like the students have caught on quickly to using the iPads? Yes. Are they learning it? Yes. Are they most all of them learning it. Um, there were some things that was interesting, again, what I was hearing teachers talk about today. Um, it's interesting hearing one teacher say, well, I tried this. Well, back to answer your question, yes. Part of what someone said today is students would come up to the teacher and say, can't we use our iPad and do this with it? And what I was proud of our teachers, what they had said was, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Or another teacher might say, you can do this on paper or you can use your iPad for this. So they're giving them choices as to which way they might want to. But um, it was when, when the teachers were sharing, they're inside Canvas. Canvas is our learning management system. They're talking about why well, use uh, use it this way, and they put the students into groups. You know, which some other teachers didn't know you could do that. Another teacher would say, um, you know, I can see how long they've been in there and when and what things they clicked on, and then you know all the conversations that come up there. You know, they one student uh, who said they'd work on it all night long. I mean, you know, you didn't. But just uh -huh. knowing that, right? Yeah, because yeah, you know how long they spent in each one and which one the things yeah. they clicked on. <laughs> um, they, they shared things like grading. They shared classroom management things. Um, it, was, it was really, I was more than um, proud of the efforts and how teachers and students have adapted to both. But they're learning. Oh, another one said it was powerful when they said, uh, I tried something. No, it didn't work. I failed at it, and it's okay to say that. I, I failed at it, but then we did it this way the next day, and then it worked great. And then hearing everything, hearing the conversations about, well, what did you do again? And, you know, when we break, there'd be other. I could hear other discussions happening. You know, when we were uh, on break. Um, conversation I had. The learning kids for the, the learning curve with the teachers is like, if a kid is like just a little moment, you know, because they're so used to have the technology, but implementing and making integrating that technology is part of your regular everyday academic class that's get over the threshold and get implementing that and the kids are willing and receptive to it it's just trying to put it all together yeah. So, yeah, but it's been well received as far as that goes it's yeah it's super exciting. I've been more than impressed with the, how is the system itself and working with the internet and wi-fi internet uh had issues one day it, it, it was 
off for an entire day, which wasn't an experiment by administrators <laughs> to shut off the internet. But those things happen. And in the good way, it teaches some of our new teachers, those things happen, right? What are you going to do when the internet is down? You don't cancel school for the day. You still keep moving. So yeah. uh, that's the positive spin on that when internet's down. But um, also to think about what, what happens when it does. Fortunately, it doesn't happen a lot. How do you get Yeah, well, there are multiple levels. It could be an internal thing. It can be an external. It could be someone working on a house somewhere that digs up an internet line, you know, 100 miles away. It can literally be that. So you have to determine first whose problem it is and then try and fix it. But um, the, the internet's been up and down. The speed, the speed is better, I'd say. Do you need more? I think we're all right. We're having, uh, I don't know, I haven't heard a lot from the elementary lately. How is it down there recently? Because we didn't increase it, and then it was a while that there were some things wrong, and then we had our internet, um, our land manager tweaking some things. Um, so it's it's been it's been good, it's been good, but we're using it too. A lot going on. We're very proud of where we've only been doing this four weeks, and seeing what they've been doing already, it's just it's amazing, honestly. Have you had any lost iPads or broken No, not really. We had one one tip. One of these tips, somebody fell off and bounced around. They couldn't find it, and they're even there when it happened. And you know, who knows where it went? So that's really so far. One, 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 one little tip. Come on with these, but wow. you know, it is early, but we say that, that, that that's yours next year when you come back. That's yours again. So take care of it. And you know, we talked about the cost of these things. The insurance doesn't cover these. You know. And, I hope when the weather turns extreme that they don't sit out in the car in the winter. Extreme heat or cold will potentially damage something like this. So it's it's been it's been good. It's been very good. Back to the air conditioning. Oh yeah. So you, you brought up something that triggered. So the air conditioning is 25 years old. So is, are all the all the heaters 25 years old? And what's the, like the life expectancy on those? Yeah, they probably would be. And I I haven't heard any discussion. You know, as these people have come in. I don't think it's a heat pump. I think it's a separate furnace system. And where are all the heaters in this place? Where are, yeah, where we can take on a field trip sometime. Right down the hall. Yeah. 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 The it's buzzing. Behind and it's, 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 up, it's upstairs three. like this. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting <laughs> as I walked around. <laughs> but, I, you know, as these guys have been around, they haven't. And some buildings will do a complete HVAC project, we'll call it, you know, the whole thing. Saving, we'll have to start saving again. So we are going to bring the train guy in. Is that yeah. Next next month, and he said he would. And he'll talk about the, the, the different avenues that you can pick. And they'll still want your business, no matter which way they may want you to lean. They'll still want your business. You know, so because he's from train does not mean in any way that you have to pick him. He's just helping us understand those avenues. Just see. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, we'll move on to the first item of new business, which would be the right to the Compton Education Association. This is exclusive. Mark and Kate will have to sign here. All right. Let's come on. Bob. No, I wouldn't. Am I leading? I'm still leading. Does it show up for you? Yeah. yeah. We're a year out in this. Um, this is for 2021. They always just do it early to make sure they get it in so they're recognized. So you've already recognized them for 1819, 1920, and now 2021. So they're they're clear out. <laughs> All it needs is a motion.
with that duty. Sometime in November we have to have some yes. got to read the closure. Yes. Okay. Yes. It has to be started by which is uh, actually, they timed this, um, I wanted to pass these around too, this is the handout for that conference in, in Omaha. Um, it's, uh, you have to be started by November 1st, but also that is when health, um, health insurance numbers come out. So they've done that by design, because that's a big piece of what we did last year, as you recall, it was 0% increase, which is nice. So, uh, just one year. I hope it's two years, but. Just, just this year, so and then it's, it's difficult to really finalize anything until you know those numbers. So that's just that uh, conference flyer. If you want to look at. Okay. Any questions? This was the document, or is the document that we spoke about earlier. Just to, uh, just to, prior to reading this, this is as presented earlier, you know the numbers. Um, here, uh, what this is showing here is last year's. General fund was about 69 cents, almost 70 cents. Now, the proposed 61 cents. I'm again, I'm rounding. Down here, the special building fund last year was just six cents. This year, almost 14 cents. Uh, heard those explanations as to why. But the most important number is that total levy. We're down a penny. We're asking for the same amount as we did last year. We didn't increase the amount of tax asset. I'll go ahead and read this in. The 2018-19 tax request resolution for Knox County School District 54-0096, whereas public was given at least five days in advance of a special public hearing called for the purpose of discussing, improving, or modifying district's tax request for the 2018-19 school year fiscal year for the general fund bond fund special building fund and qualified capital purpose undertaking fund of Knox County School District 54-0096 and whereas such public hearing was held before the Board of Education of Knox County School District 54-0096 at the time date and place announced in the notice published in a newspaper of general circulation, a copy of which notice and proof of publication of which is attached, required by law, whereas the board provided an opportunity to receive comment, information, and evidence from persons in attendance at such special hearing, and whereas the board having reviewed the district's tax request for each said fund, and after public consideration of the matter, has determined that the final tax request, as listed below, are necessary in order to carry out the functions of the district as determined by the board for the 2018-2019 school fiscal year. Now be it therefore resolved that the tax request for the general fund should be and is hereby set at $3,535,353.50. The tax request for the bond fund should be hereby set at zero tax request for the special building fund should be and hereby set at 808080 and 80 cents and the tax request uh, for the qualified capital purpose undertaking fund should be and hereby set at zero and then um, if that's what the board would like to do we just need a motion and a second at this time
Dana will fill in the rest of that. So just, just yep. sign. This has been um, a process that you've been working towards. The process being of those community engagement meetings. We again have had goals and we've had things that we've been working on, but this makes it a little bit more uh, substantial in that we're putting it in, and you're adopting it, and you're putting it in writing. This doesn't mean that we don't do other things, because we do. Um, quickly though, an infrastructure, short long-term facility plan. Okay. Um, when we're talking about the short long-term facility plans, we want to make sure and consider before and after school programs and early childhood education opportunities. Again, all these things were taken as a culminating, oh, remember we, each of us went around and talked about what we thought was important, so we, they're all in here. Curriculum and instruction, oh excuse me, the second part of that infrastructure is to consider appropriate facility modifications for the cooling system. Curriculum. So consider opportunities to expand curriculum and sustain dual credit coursework. We're already doing some of these things. And we're of course moving forward with our project for infrastructure. So many of these are in motion already. Expand college and career readiness. I know my son specifically is in one of those classes and he's going out, uh, he's going out today on job shadowing. So. Some of these things that we're doing, and I, I like that on a personal note, knowing my son doesn't necessarily know what he wants to do, so he's going out and job shopping. So that's that's good stuff, really good stuff. Planning and development to engage with community members to study and develop a plan to address a housing shortage. So we want to bring in community members that this just isn't our issue, but it does affect us. So when we're talking with them, just to continue to discuss that. And then this is the big one, to commit, participate in the design and plan of a strategic plan. So the strategic plan is the big thing. Within that, we have our facility plan and, uh, and continuing to engage the community. And just moving forward to decide. I spoke to the strategy, um, our steering committee today. Um, tomorrow, Tuesday, Tuesday the 11th, WASA is having a bond vote. So it'll be interesting. Again, not that one town does or doesn't, or there's passes or doesn't, but it's just inter interesting to watch. So I'll be, voting they're voting on the three million some odd dollar um, renovation. renovation. Uh, they want to take down one building, the old, really old building, and renovate and add on a little bit. They also have a substantial donation from a wealthy benefactor um, for a big CT building. So if any of you know anyone that would like to do that too, that'd be, that'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it will it will be interesting to see. As you know, why not's passed one in the recent past. Well it'll be interesting to see what Wassa does. So uh, and uh, whether they do it or not doesn't necessarily affect us, but it's information to know and how it went and what people said and how the vote went. Is the vote tomorrow? The the votes tomorrow, yeah. Your vote might just be one. Yeah.
that's uh, there already, and there's the bathroom in, in between there. Oh, so we're looking at doing that. So it's just accessible for, yeah, it's, it's a great project.
well. I mean, maybe one this year. But those things happen. Yeah, exactly. And we're, we're the positive for sure. Right. And the only reason I say that is because it'd be nice to know what's initiating those people to come in this yeah. direction. I mean, have something broke down. Yeah. Okay, that's what they can want. It might help us in our strategic plan. Sure. still be someone we may have tons of meetings there'll still be someone out there when it comes up and says what you know where this come from you know so we'll do our best you know to inform people but based on the early meetings there was lots of interest and lots of positive things happening good vibes so I think the housing part of it has to be collaborative the community it does. can't take that burden on ourselves oh right so right I think that's something that
That's what I was going to say on the back here. On the back here, one of our little things: Would you do good for students at this meeting? Yeah. You know, so that that would be exactly the theme: is you know, you do the thing for moving forward with our community to do things good for our school right. or our right. entire community. And that's why we're here. Discussion or question. Well, you want to go ahead? Talk to a plane, it'll be an hour. Yeah, you want to go ahead? Yes. Evans? Yes. Gunther? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah